Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at some ways to get started with NoSQL injection. Now, what is NoSQL? Well, NoSQL stands for not only SQL or non-SQL, which is a style of database design that lets you store and query data outside of traditional structures. Another way to put it is databases without a schema. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to start off with, as with most things, but as security professionals, we always strive to be proficient enough with the technology to understand what's going on under the hood and how that fits into the wider context of the application or system we're evaluating or attacking. So with that in mind, I generally see NoSQL databases like MongoDB as a place where loosely coupled objects are stored. Now, what I mean by loosely coupled? Well, basically they might have some similar properties or attributes, but it's no guarantee. So if we have a user, they might have a user, a username, an age, a password, and some other information. Some of the users might not have an age. Some of the users might have the date of birth. Some of them might have an address field and others might not. So kind of loosely coupled and not strict. So with that, let's take a quick look at how we can interact with MongoDB, which is by far the most popular NoSQL database, and see what we can do. All right, so this is a really quick introduction to NoSQL and MongoDB. So we're just gonna get hands-on and drop into a Mongo shell. Now you can see that um, we're now able to interact with MongoDB and we can start looking at the databases that exist by just typing show DBs. And you can see we have admin config, express to do and local. Now I'm just gonna create a DB called please like and subscribe. Um, and you can see that it's just switched us directly to this. Now, interestingly enough, when we do show DBs, it doesn't come up. Um, this is because uh, this is temporary until we actually put a collection or, or some data into this database. Now, in terms of collections, uh, I like to think of these as tables. So um, they're a little bit different whoops, um, because uh, they're not constrained by columns or structures. But in my mind, collections are basically tables if you come from a more traditional relational uh, database background. Now again, you can see that we put in show collections and nothing comes up, but if we create a user object, for example, by doing db.users.insert1, and we insert something, so let's just put name is Jeremy, and hit enter, we insert this user object, and then if we show collections again, we can see that we do indeed have the user's collection. So we don't need to create the collection ahead of time. We can just throw data at MongoDB and it will ingest it, um, which is quite handy for scale and working quickly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly query this collection. So I'm just gonna do db.users.find and it's gonna return Jeremy. We're gonna add some more uh, data to this. So let's say we have another user called Jessamy and Jessamy is from, uh, let's say, Scotland. And now when I do db.users.find, it returns Jeremy up here and also Jessamy. And you'll notice that Jessamy also has this country uh, set as well. Um, so again, the structure is quite loose and MongoDB doesn't care whether all of the objects together have the same properties or different properties, same data, different data, doesn't really matter. If we want to do a little bit more advanced filtering, um, so we can do things like db.users.find and then we can just say, I just want the first record, for example. We can do limit one to get Jeremy. Um, or if we want to do something like, I only want users from Scotland, so we can pass in country, oops, country Scotland here like this, and we only get Jessamy back uh, in our results. Now, something that's really important is that we can also pass in um, operations. So for example, in the find function, instead of doing find everybody by Scotland, we might want to, let's say, um, find the country. And we want to say, instead of Scotland, we might want to put something like not equal to Scotland. 
And when we run this, it's going to find all of the users where the uh, country attribute is not equal to Scotland. So we get back Jeremy. And this kind of logic or this kind of operator is exactly what we're going to use in the next section to bypass the authentication on the NoSQL challenge. So th that was a really super quick intro. And of course, if you're not familiar with MongoDB, definitely recommend going in, watching some YouTube videos and having a play with it. Uh, it's really important as security professionals to understand the underlying logic so that we can find, interact with, create and troubleshoot payloads and get them to work. So now let's dive into a hands-on NoSQL injection challenge. So I've spun up a NoSQL challenge that was built by Sneak and you can find it on their GitHub repository if you want to give it a try yourself. Um, the challenge here is to log in as admin at sneak.io with no password. Now what we're going to do is we're going to send a JSON operation to MongoDB for processing instead of a string for the password. Let's start by sending a request and open up Burp Suite. So if I just do admin at sneak.io and I'm just going to send the password as password. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to switch on my proxy. And we get a bit of an application error here, although actually we can fix this. So we're just going to ignore that for now. Maybe I'll raise that as a issue in the repository. And we're going to come and take a look at this request. Hit Control R to send it to repeater, or you can right click and click Send to repeater. And here we have our request. Now, um, we are getting a 500 response, but if we actually convert this to JSON, our application is going to work correctly. Now, the easiest way to do this is either just to change the content type to JSON here and then change the payload to JSON. Or what you can do is you can use a extension. And if you come to extensions, the app store. And I think if we just search for converter, we have this content type converter. You can go ahead and click install. Come back to repeater, right click extensions content type converter, convert to JSON. And this converts it for us. Now we are gonna have to update the uh, username and password field, whoops, um, to have JSON data. So we're just gonna put username uh, is uh, admin at sneak.io. And then we're gonna have uh, password and we're just gonna send password for the time being. So now when we send this, we get a 401 unauthorized. Um, and so instead of sending a password, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna update this to a operation. So we're gonna say, let me just switch this to raw instead of pretty to make it a little bit easier to see. Um, we're gonna say the password is not equal to blank. Um, we could put anything in here. So for example, we could put the password is not equal to 123 or not equal to undefined. Um, so the logic of the application is it's going to say, hey, grab um, the username where the username is, uh, grab, sorry, the user where the username is admin at sneak.io and the password is not equal to blank. So assuming the admin has a password, this should work. Now we just go ahead and click send and instead of getting a 401, we get a 302 found and we have a redirect to slash admin. Now in Burp Suite, we can just click follow redirection and we have admin access granted. And I think we can just click render and here you can see the challenge is complete. Now, if you want to practice this attack, then there's also some challenges on OWASP Juice Shop, uh, which is very easy to download, install, and, and get up and running with. So be sure to check that out. And if you need payloads to test out, so obviously we just tried the not equals payload, but there are other ones that uh, exist. So if we come to Swiss Key Repo, which I think I have bookmarked here, you can just Google for Swiss Key Repo. And if you go to NoSQL injection, I'm sure many of you will be familiar with this uh, repository. Um, and you come down and you will be able to see some ones to uh, start you off or to start trying. Now these ones that are passing in arrays are probably more likely to work on PHP based applications where you can pass an array um, as a parameter. 
And these ones that are in JSON format are more likely to work on uh, things like Node applications, Node.js applications. So depending on the technology stack you're using, you're going to have to try different payloads in different formats. But again, the logic is the same. So you can see here where we have the username is not equal to Toto or Tutu. And the password is not equal to Toto or Tutu. So the first user that gets returned in this case is likely to be logged in. Um, and you have the exact same uh, JSON uh, equivalent here as well. So that's it for this video. Always remember to try and learn at least the basics of what's happening under the hood. Also, getting familiar with things like how the logic behind a typical login mechanism works is going to help you tremendously on your application security journey. Once we understand the behavior, it becomes much easier to exploit. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot for the channel. And if there's anything you want me to cover in the future, drop it down in the comments below. See you next time.